The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everyone, live here in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined my co-host here, Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon, industry leading analyst. Uh, and our next guest is end user, Dimitra with Centrica. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we'd love to have people who actually deploy the technology. Um, you're one of those. So tell us, um, what do you think about the ecosystem here? What's your take on Hadoop Summit, um, the vibe? And what things are you seeing that, that attract you from a technology perspective? I think it's growing. That's, that's the first thing I would like to say. Um, I've not been here uh, in San Jose before, um, uh, or in the Hadoop Summit in the US before, but um, um, I, I certainly was at Amsterdam. <laughs> I was actually speaking at a con um, in one of, as one of the panelists there. Um, and it's just getting bigger and bigger uh, in a span of three months. So vibe is really positive. Um, we're using Hadoop and we have great expectations from it. Um, and obviously it's great to see that um, the team here at Hortonworks are really putting a lot um, into the core itself, which directly um, helps us as end users, customers. Yeah, well, well, tell us a little bit about Centrica uh, for those members of our, our audience who aren't familiar with you. Sure, Centrica is actually a very uh, you know, billion, billion dollar um, company. It's a global company. Um, I actually work for British Gas, which is one of the largest business units um, of Centrica. Uh, what we do in the UK is um, we talk about, um, we actually um, are in the energy utilities market. Um, as well as home services market, mm -hmm. as well as a number of other different, so we, we actually cover a broad range of things, also in the insurance market. So quite a vibrant and quite a dynamic company. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about um, you know, how you're using Hadoop at uh, uh, British Gas. Yeah, so the, we started really the journey about, I think, uh, now just over 12 months. Um, uh, we started with um, trying to solve our uh, data problems uh, within the organization, the advent of smart metering, um, as well as the fact that we wanted to um, uh, reduce a lot of IT costs. So that's when we started with the journey. We look, started looking at the strategy around how do we completely transform our data landscape with Hadoop. Um, but we've come a long way. Uh, we've moved on from just the strategy um, and the architecture definition to a proof of concept and then moving on now to almost going nearer to production. Uh, so you mentioned smart metering, and of course that has huge implications for a company like yours, I would imagine. Where it does, If yeah. it's similar to here in the U.S. where, you know, with a traditional meter, you, somebody goes out maybe once a month and reads the meter, and, and now with the smart meter it's every 30 minutes or whatever the interval might be, or it's sending data home. Is it, was it mainly a data volume issue that uh, got I mean, you to look at this, or? It's not so much just the smart metering um, concept here um, at, um, at British Gas. It's, also, it's the connection that that has with the rest of the estate. Mm -hmm. That's what drives um, the complexity, as in, um, Everybody is now trying to kind of understand what, what benefits can we get out of this data if we try and join it with the rest of the estate and um, what insights can we drive. And using that insights, um, it's a direct Im implication to the way we run our business, to the way we um, do, that was a big sound. Hopefully we'll get that <laughs> feedback taken care of momentarily. <laughs> Sorry. So, so yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's mainly about the connections um, and it's mainly about the complexity. And it's also about um, our existing systems. How can we actually run them better, run them efficiently? It's a, ho all, it's a host of things, really. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's about using that data to, to run your, your internal operations, understand how Internal working. operations, yeah, how, how, how we can better manage our um, resources, how we can efficiently manage our processes, mm -hmm. as well as how can we think about the future, new applications that we can uh, generate um, with this data. Well, it's interesting because uh, you know we've recently uh, conducted a survey. One of the you know big use cases was just that kind of uh, optimizing internal operations, which is a huge area uh, where companies can find a lot of efficiency, results in a lot of savings, and potentially you can route that sa those savings into new analytic projects and to find new insights. Yeah. So um, talk a little bit, walk us through a little bit, kind of um, you mentioned kind of modernizing your, your yes. infrastructure. So take us from kind of where you were to kind of where you are to where you'd like to be, if you could. Kind of walk us through the journey a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we, where, where we are, really, we're pretty mature in terms of what we're trying to achieve 
uh, from a Hadoop perspective, from modernizing the data fabric or the data operating system that we keep talking about. That's where we are. Where we would like to be is we would like to be that data-driven organization where we can proactively identify opportunities um, to make the best of our investments. And that's where we would like to be. And I think we're, we're in a pretty good shape right now. Um, where we were, um, not, not even like to think about uh, <laughs> at this point in time, but pretty much a um, lot of the same kind of problems that large enterprises face with respect to legacy uh, applications and complexity of the architecture. Um, and if that's where we started from, we, we are on a journey to clean that up, um, kind of modernize our foundations uh, before we venture, venture out into running new business applications on it. And, and what's the culture like at British Gas relative to making kind of data-driven decisions? Is that, is, has data always been, whether it's small data or big data, part of the kind of culture of British Gas? Or is that something you've got to work on instilling in, in employees? I think, I think we've got to do more work on that. But data has always been an integral part um, of the way we make our decisions. Um, it's, it's obviously improving every single day with the advent of big data, not just big data, with the advent of um, new opportunities that energy markets are facing, not only in terms of cost reduction, but also in terms of revenue generation, looking for new opportunities, making life simpler and better uh, for our customers. So it covers a wide range um, of things, and all of that, if you look at it, can only be made possible with data and the right utilization of data. Um, so I'd say it's never enough what you do with your data. It just has to be a continuous iterative process, and that's where I would like to see uh, mm -hmm. British Gas. How has security been a big force in your organization? Obviously, everyone doesn't say, oh, you don't care about security. No, no one says that, but when you look at Hadoop and what's going on there, obviously security is the big power move, first Hortonworks, and then now Cloudera following suit to uh, Hortonworks. So, you know, that's a huge issue, and it's a telltale sign that Guys, that's table stakes. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's a great move um, by both of the um, both companies, and especially for enterprises like us, security is in the core. It's it's the foundation, really. Um, so we're, we're quite we're quite happy that um, those acquisitions have taken place, and we're looking forward to how that integrates with the product, with the core, and then how can we benefit from the opportunities. So I was talking earlier, we had uh, the CTO of Wendisco on, I said, lay out the differences between Cloudera and Hortonworks. Uh, in a way, if, if a friend asked you, what's the difference between Cloudera and Hortonworks? How would you answer that question? Um, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't comment on that because I haven't used Cloudera really. So <laughs> I don't know how to comment on that. But if you ask me without the... Well, Cloudera uh, is a lot of sales reps, so that's you know, obvious. Everyone talks about yeah. that. They're pen and Dave. A lot of guys on the street, this field organization. Hortonworks is more open source focus. Yes, so you see yeah. the two. I mean, that's, that's almost right in the face, um, that differentiation between the two companies. But, the, but if you ask me without, um, you know, as just an observer on, of the community, um, I'd agree with that statement, really. It's the open source, and it's uh, the number of times you actually can innovate, a number of people you can engage, which is really the differentiating factor. So, as John has kind of alluded to, Hortonworks is very much focused on kind of a lot of the reseller arrangements with SAP, Teradata, et cetera. And I imagine at British Gas, as you mentioned, you've got a lot of legacy applications. I imagine the environment there is a, a heterogeneous one. Very heterogeneous um, indeed. Does, does, that, does Hortonworks approach make it easier to integrate with kind of some of your other technologies? What are some of the other technologies you're using? Uh, I'm just curious to kind of get an understanding of the relationship between Hadoop and some of the other data management tools and technologies you use. It's very important to us, the integration factor. Um, as you rightly pointed out, we're a very heterogeneous and, um, you know, system of, the environment is really heterogeneous. I've got uh, almost all the names that you mentioned, plus some <laughs> more. Um, and it is very important, and it was when we started off with this journey, it was very important for us to see um, seek a product, an operating system, which is what we're talking about here, which um, which can connect and integrate as an open um, service into all of these ecosystem partners. And I'd, I'd like to say we're pretty pleased with the way it has worked out so far. There's obviously a long way to go uh, with some of our vendors in terms of how uh, they can push down queries natively down into the platform so that we can utilize the potential of the platform better. But I'm glad to say that the way it has panned out, it's a very collaborative um, community. Um, and they stick to the word, the way they work with each other, whether it's Microsoft, Teradata, or SAP. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you know, another finding in our survey recently was uh, a vast majority, I think over 70% of, uh, of the end users uh, employed some type of outside consultants. Uh, was that something you did, or, or do you guys have the internal expertise to kind of architect the system, or did you bring in um, some outside professional services to kind of help you architect and deploy uh, I think it some was of these big data technologies? All of that. Mm -hmm. um, the approach that we took was we uh, we were very um, certain from the very beginning that we would like to develop in-house capabilities mm -hmm. um, because we see the potential. Uh, not only in the market but in the product and it is important um, for us as a company to gain the skills that we need to in order to exploit the platform in the best possible way. Um, so the way, the approach that we took was the architecture, the strategy was pretty much our baby, uh, the vision was ours um, and then in terms of implementing it we brought in expertise from uh, companies like Wartonworks um, and some other infrastructure uh, companies and then we integrated them into the team, the in-house team. We also gave an opportunity for our team members to learn, um, let's say, you know, using a we gave them Raspberry Pis to start with, mm -hmm. just to play with it, and then laptops, and then it was a gradual upgrade <laughs> for them as well. But they enjoyed uh, learning with it as much as um, you know we did. Mm -hmm. Well, so we, question on, on uh, our crowd chat from the audience here uh, is uh, Jess basically asking, you know, how does you, how do you guys deploy Hadoop? Uh, the question that followed up from the audience is, how do you guys hook Hadoop into other big data tools? Um, so it's pretty much the integration point that I covered uh, a minute ago. Um, in terms of deploying Hadoop, we, um, we do have a disaster recovery approach as well as a kind of a high availability approach to Hadoop. So we, um, across data centers, we have deployed that. Um, and the way we integrate with most of our kind of existing ecosystem partners is pretty much using the connectors that they provide us. Um, and also, uh, where we can't get to that, we allow them to natively um, try and push the data away out of Hadoop into those ecosystem partners. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, final question for you is, what is the future for Hadoop in your mind? Uh, how do you see it evolving over the next five years? Whenever somebody asks me that question, the first thing that comes to me is there's no, there's no straight answer to that. It, the opportunities are huge. Um, I think it's what we do with it. That's where the future lies. I think Jeff Kelly said 51 billion and there were people poo pooed that number. Was it 51? Uh, yeah, just over $50 billion, but that's from a revenue perspective. I mean, we think as big as that number is, it's going to be practitioners like British Gas that are going to drive the most value. And the value that you drive, and, com and companies like yours that are really using Hadoop, I mean, it's the, the, the size of that market is going to be much bigger. Uh, the Internet of Things is a big part of your business. Energy, you think about energy, you think about exploration, you think about all kinds of things involved in energy, uh, transport of energy, all this. Is a, that's a big data challenge it from is. an Internet of Things standpoint. What do you think about that market? Is it just early adopters now? Is there a lot of thinking? Is there a delivery around it? What's there? Get, get, peg that evolution of that industry, early days. I think it's, um, it's, it's early days, yes. It's fair to say it's early days, and things are going to pan out you know, in a very, very wide distribution um, of use cases that you just mentioned. Uh, but yeah, I would categorize that as early days, but I think we're strong thinkers as well. We're learning from other industries as fast as we can, and we, I think we're, it's, a, it's a great time with this technology kicking off, um, and we being in the early stages as the early adopters, we've done the right choice in picking up the latest state-of-the-art technology to solve our big data problems. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE, D. We really Thank appreciate you. hearing from a practitioner, someone out in the trenches, buying and deploying and using the technologies. Thank you. Um, obviously, we're bullish on big data. We just think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Cost of ownership, value chain integration, new devices. Um, it's just amazing, it's a fun time. This is theCUBE, and of course, we're documenting it, breaking it down. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>